Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today is a pretty exciting day for me because I just received a couple of patch panels and uh, network switches from FS.com. They reached out to me and wanted me to review a couple of their items on my channel, which is really cool. So this is my first sponsored content that I'm bringing to you today. So I'm gonna post a link to FS.com as well as a lot of the stuff that they have for it. A lot of it is major enterprise networking stuff and I decided to select something that was a little bit less uh, integral. Uh, they have very high-end networking switches and patch panels and they have uh, you know mid-tier stuff as well. So I decided to go with uh, more of a mid-tier range stuff that would suit my uh, setup better and uh, what I'll do is you can go through uh, the website here and take a look for yourself to see what there is. Unfortunately, there's no affiliation link yet, but if you reach out to me, then maybe I can contact them and maybe we can work out a discount of some sort. Um, so with that said, let's start with the unboxing. All right. first thing that we're going to be looking at here today is going to be the patch panel. So we're going to unbox this uh, patch panel. It is a 24 port patch panel and it's a, I guess they call it a F F STP patch panel. So what that means is that you're not uh, having to crimp and put in the wires at the back. The It's basically a female to female RJ45 connector that is in the patch panel. So you're connecting the back of the patch panel with an RJ45 connection, which all my stuff is already terminated, so I didn't want to have to cut them and then splice them into a patch panel. So being able to easily just take them out, plug them into something else, and plug them back into the patch panel from the back is was paramount to me selecting this specific device. So I'll post on the link here what device I'm actually uh, going to be reviewing here today, but. For now, I'm just going to open up the packaging that was sent and verify that nothing got damaged in shipping. Oh wow! All right, so it's a Cat Six, uh, Cat Six shielded feel-through patch panel, which is awesome. Plus, we got a whole bunch of these one-inch uh, connectors, which are six-inch connectors, because I'm going to be going directly from the patch panel directly into the switch. Okay, so. Here it is. Nice. Oh man, this is beautiful. It's got the cable management bar at the back. And as you can see here, the back of it is all RJ45 connections. So that's the back. Here's the front, the RJ45 connections. And it's all metal. These are solid, not plastic. These are all metal connectors here. So you can see that they all are uh, Cat6, which is excellent. I mean, I have Cat6 for everything in my house yet, but there's the 24 ports, which we're gonna be utilizing, and that's just gonna be really easy to work with. Basically, you just literally screw it into uh, your rack and, and plug in the RJ45 connector at the back. That's gonna be so simple to, to plug and play. All 24 ports, this is awesome. And it has a top labeler as well, which is, extremely useful uh, being able to label each one of the ports and basically you take off this piece here this little plastic piece here you toss on the labels of each uh, what the, each port is going to and that's going to allow me to know exactly which cable and which port is going to go to the switch so that is key you don't see that on every patch panel usually you have to like the stick or some things down so yeah this is a 1u patch panel and we'll get into the review on this later, but that's the unboxing. It's pretty basic. There's really nothing much here. You've got a couple of zip ties and the connectors for the um, to connect it to the what your case, your, your case, your server rack, and then you have the, the the bar for the strain relief on the cables that goes on the back of the patch panel so you zip tie basically you zip tie all the cables onto this portion here 
that connects directly into the patch panel so that there's no strain on the RJ45 connectors here. So if you didn't, if you didn't have this uh, kind of strain relief, the RJ45 connectors would be pulling down on this portion here and that would, you know, over time it would weigh it down and possibly make it loose or even pull out. So uh, these strain reliefs are crucial. Nice. All right. Obviously you've got your documentation. It's a patch panel. There's really not much to it. Don't really need to read the documentation on how to install it. Um, you just plug and play with the patch panel. So that's awesome. I'm really happy they sent me this. And the next thing we're going to look at is the actual switch. All right, so the next thing we're going to review is actually the switch. So it's a 24 port switch. Uh, it's got four one gigabit FC switches, uh, uh, SFP switches, and uh, fanless. So you're not hearing a huge draw on. Uh, of the fans ramping up. A lot of server switches have to have active cooling. This one does not, and, and maybe it's because it doesn't have a lot of the other features that those do. So the first thing I noticed when I unbox this is the uh, packaging is really well done. Uh, this came from China, and this bubble wrap is really unique. Um, like it's really hard. Uh, pressurized air in here. It's not like bubble wrap. It's actually just like pumped with air and then tied, tied across. I'm going to be reusing this for sure if I have to ship anything. So uh, came in with a lot of that and uh, there was no, no damage on the boxes. And so we'll just pull this out. All right, so here we go. We've got the switch. It is, again, it's the 24 port uh, S3700 24T4F. Um, so basically, just 24 port uh, 100 slash 1000 base T gigabit managed switch with four SFP ports, which I don't really need, uh, but I might find a use for them in the future. Got your user manual, sweet. Uh, we're definitely going to have to use that just because I don't know anything about managed switches. So I have somebody coming by to actually help me set up the network with the managed switch, and we're probably going to fiddle around with the internal uh, operating system with this. You got your standard power cable, and then you've got a VGA connector. Interesting. So it's an uh, Ethernet to VGA connector, so you can plug directly the Ethernet into the switch and you can actually connect it through a display port, e uh, sorry, VGA port. So that's actually really interesting. I did not know you can do that. That is really cool. So Ethernet to VGA, that's pretty cool. Uh, here you've got your ground, your ground cable that you're going to be attaching to the side of your server rack. Uh, they do that for all all all, uh, all units, and then this is the um, this is just the connector to their server rack that you need to plug it in. All right, you can see it right away. We've got the uh, these are the four uh, FSP ports. Uh, this is probably the uh, one managed display out. Yeah, the console port. So this is the console port, and then the 24 uh, ports here. One thing I really like about this is that you get to see all the separate LEDs here. So you can see the activity stuff on the side. It doesn't have to go above and beyond, uh, like above and below in the switches here. Because one of the issues with these types of things is that you're going to have cables coming over top of each one of the ports and it covers up the LEDs uh, activity lights. So having the activity lights over here on the side allows you to see which port may not be responding. So that was really useful. I enjoy that a lot as opposed to having it, uh, the LED lights on each one of the ports. So that's pretty good. And then obviously around the back is very basic, just the plug and that's it. And then this is the, uh, you tie your ground to this and to the case. Once it's in the rack, you just plug in the console, which we'll be doing outside of the rack first. And I'm gonna take a look at the yeah, cool. The F, uh, SFP port right there. 
Very neat. All right. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually get this stuff up and running. And uh, we're going to log into the console and start messing around with what we can do uh, on this. And then eventually we're going to be revamping my whole network. So we'll go down there. I'll show you what we're going to be doing and how we're going to be doing it. Sweet. Let's go. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing that network uh, switch and patch panel. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and get it up al along uh, behind here. So I'm going to undo these two brackets here and try and get the patch panel coming into the switch like this because I want to be able to use three U of spaces. So here's one, two, three, uh, sorry. Uh, for, so basically uh, three more for you spaces. And the way to do that is as long as I don't go below this mark here with the switch and the panel, then I can use another three for you racks in here. So that's the idea. If we can get it set up in here, um, that would be great. We're gonna have to take a look at the depth and remove that shelf back here. Uh, and then we'll redo all the networking at the very back there. So it's kind of a big job, but it should be pretty cool once it's done. So we were able to install it at the very top and not really actually have to lose any of the ports because we're able to go around them. So hopefully this should be sufficient enough to be able to do a patch panel right below it and not lose, lose anything here. That is awesome. All right, we're finally getting this ground installed temporarily. Probably don't need it really, but we're just doing it to be safe. If I ever do have uh, other added servers on here, then obviously I have to revamp and review where this is gonna go, but at that point we'll be revamping the whole thing anyway, so. All right, safety. So for the strain relief on this device, we ended up having to bend this piece of metal back into place. It wasn't actually connecting on both sides here. And the issue that we're finding is that it's very flimsy. It's very flimsy metal. So even over time, if we have the strain relief on all of these uh, panels here, that this could easily just slip off. And there's not a lot of pressure, even when we straightened it again. So. What we're going to try and do is we're going to try and make it uh, bend it kind of a little bit inwards but as it came out of the box uh, this was not connecting at all to be honest and we had to bend it in so that that's interesting and we'll see how the strain relief actually works uh, i hope we can get it to work properly but if not we might have to just kind of chalk this up to kind of a defect Awesome, so we are now officially done mounting it. We did have a little bit of a screw, uh, screw up there. That's a little annoying. I'll touch that with black paint. Uh, but the pad panel here is all completely visible. Uh, and then the 24 ports we can get, definitely we can use all the ports for sure. The only issue that I see right now is that 
these are going to need to be longer patch panels, which I do have, I have enough. Uh, and then I have the six inch ones here for the short runs and then I may need to get some longer ones. But uh, hopefully I should have enough and we'll see how this goes. Alright, so it is all complete, installed and up and running. Uh, Everything here on the left is my internal networking. Uh, these are here are for the servers here. And on the right hand side over here is uh, the rented server space that I'm renting out here for these servers. So uh, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up uh, segregating this portion of the network with some of the cool features that you can use on this managed switch, creating a separate uh, virtual network for the rented servers, and then mine will have its own internal networking here. As you can see, we, uh, we aren't gonna actually lose uh, any space or any ports. I'm going to Dremel this piece here off so we can access those four ports at the back. And you can tell, this is why I like uh, this form factor of uh, the, the the switch where you have the separated LED uh, readouts as opposed to if you had them in here you would you would have to move the cables to see uh, the actual if the activity lights were working on those switches so here it's really clear easy to see all you have to do is uh, look at the number correspond it with the port and you'll know whether or not it's transmitting uh, data or not so that's awesome. It's done finally. It looks great. Uh, we got the perfect space. I can actually still have extra servers in this rack. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the features of setting up and separating uh, portions of my network uh, for connectivity. So, all right. I'm really happy with the patch panel and the switch. Let me know what you guys think, and we'll see you guys in the next one.